Hey guys, welcome to Banter Bleeds again. Uh, we're going to play several games uh, of Bleed and try to learn something as well. That's the primary goal actually. So I'm not going to win each and every game, but I will try my best to do that, of course. So uh, let's see what we have in the sense of challenges. Just as usual, uh, let me know if you can uh, hear me and see me well. I hope that everything uh, will go smoothly from the technical point of view and Olaf says that all okay. That's nice. So let's get to challenges and see what we have here. So as usual, I'm going to start uh, with somebody I've never played before or maybe, you know, played not so often at least. And yes, here we have uh, Gabriel from Romania. So let's accept that guy. First, and then we'll see. So I usually prefer playing five minutes or three plus something like plus two seconds for each move but okay so we start with three minute game so i have to play faster that's the thing we don't have so much time at our disposal to make decisions taking into account that we're also going to discuss the things <laughs> simultaneously we should play in the game okay so just as usual for this opening i'm not sure that uh this decision of simply trading uh, the bishop for the knight is good because uh, in my opinion black's compensation for damaged pawn structure on the queen side is exactly this pair of bishops um, i think i have repeated it uh, so many times during the shows but anyway it's always good to repeat I guess to learn something for real now uh, we simply have better pawn structure so we have a long-term advantage here the thing is how to play here I think c3 square is just bad for the knight so there is nothing to do there so let's go to d2 I guess here my knight has much better perspectives it can go to c4 to f3 attacking e5 and so on well, B5 is a serious weakening of the position. I think it's okay for us just to, um, you know, undermine the pawn immediately, like saying that at any moment I'm ready to open the A file and do something with this. Doesn't mean that I have to take on B5 uh, in the nearest future. Moreover, it will be probably good for black because in that case, after AB5 and CB5, black no longer has these doubled pawns. But at some point when there is a real possibility to actually attack along the a file i can consider that rook b8 looks a bit strange to me uh it feels like i can just jump with the queen to a7 now attacking the rook and it feels good um on the other hand i guess it's better to start with knight b3 move to have uh bishop c1 a bit more active so being able to go to e3 after that so that I no longer have to think of you know some lines when my queen can be trapped there probably it was a bad decision so maybe queen a7 instantly was was a better one I don't know now if I play queen a7 and black castles I probably cannot take a6 because of rook a8 and I'm afraid my queen will be trapped in that case all right what can we do instead well, we can plan something based on f4 move. So I guess queen e2 should be played first. And then the next move, f4. That's a good idea to control light squares with the queen as well, because we have a dark squared bishop and no light squared bishop on the board. That's how the uh, responsibility should be shared. And I think f4 is just good enough to fight for advantage. So potentially we'll have a good center. Okay, c5 actually stops me from various things based on that, but I cannot, I mean, I cannot play d4 quickly, but I have other targets as well. So now c5 becomes a target. For example, queen is a target. 
So if queen d6, then probably just e5. Looks good. Now I think I can take on c5, right? It takes, 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 queen b6. Uh, I have bishop e3, so let's do it. And if queen b6 instantly, then bishop e3 as well. Feels like extra pawn now without much compensation. Or can be that I overestimate my position just as usual. But for now, it feels pretty safe. The only problem is my uh, time trouble, but my opponent is also uh, having not so great time. <laughs> with the time and the clock, I mean. So let's just uh, make sure there is no counterplay whatsoever and focus on, on the king side. Uh, to take or not to take? No, I think we don't have to. This would just activate the opponent's rook. I don't want my opponent to have any sort of counterplay. Okay, in this case, I think we can be slightly greedy. Let's just take the pawn. I don't see why it should be bad. There was just a little trick with that check on b6, but everything else is just perfect or nearly perfect. Okay, so queen c8 is not a checkmate because if knight f8, so probably black can play something like queen e4 because taking here is just it is a win for white, right? So a couple of extra pawns, this b4 will drop anyway, and so on. Um, so what was the mistake? Well, first of all, I think this bishop f3 is kind of a strange thing. So it's better just to play h5 here and take on f3 only when it uh, gives you something tangible, because here it's just an exchange. And then, as I said, you just have a worse pawn structure, doubled pawns, and no longer have a compensation for uh, this, right? Uh, so here, yeah, after 92, I guess this b5 was another mistake, which gave me some simple targets. Probably here I missed this uh, great chance just to win the material after queen a7, because uh, black cannot play rook b6. Well, technically it's possible, but then after a5, rook is trapped. So I guess it's just over for black. And if black simply protects the rook somehow or goes away with the rook, I can just take on a6 with the extra material and I don't think my queen uh, will be trapped there because I have a b5 if uh, before um, then my queen has c4 square and so on. Um, I missed that uh, but anyway white's position was superior and uh, yeah so here it's it's hard for black uh, to keep the material maybe queen d6 was still possible interesting move so if I play Knight takes c5, then queen d4 check, but even there I have some like bishop e3, but then b2 drops. So it's not necessarily clear. And if I play some like e5, there is queen d5, and I. Well, probably I can take on f6, right? Because in that case, I get two minor pieces for the rook. Yeah, and I think a convertible advantage. Yes, yeah, so black's position was already quite bad here. All right, so let's go uh, further and see if we have someone. Uh, we have never played before. So Clasher and Olaf, I don't even check. I do remember we played a lot. Area 51, we have played only once uh, one week ago, so probably will consider that challenge. I'm on, uh, you know, others to play as soon as possible. Uh, but for now, I can see the guy from Latvia. We have never played before, so I'll just accept that one. Okay, and white pieces still. It's so just as usual, chess 24 is pretty generous at the very beginning of the show, which is nice. Because for some reason I prefer playing uh, with white pieces. For a long time it was not the case, so I've actually preferred playing with black, but now it's kind of boring for me to play with black. <laughs> Sounds stupid, I know. Uh, nevertheless, all right, bishop to c5. Let me just remember what do we do here. We just take on c6 as far as I remember. And we get pretty similar stuff compared to the previous game, but it's within the Berlin. 
but the bond structure is just the same. So we can apply uh, similar ideas to this position. Black should probably avoid exchanging uh, one of his bishops because it's the main compensation for a war spawn structure. So queen e2 protects in f2, which means e5 is now hanging, which is not possible to take it immediately because of queen d4 attacking the knight in f2. And here, let me just remember what I usually play. Uh, either bishop e3 or knight d2 or a3. Uh, let's just play bishop e3 in this game. If bishop takes, I'll take with the pawn, and if queen b4 check, then c3 protect and b2. So I'm not losing material here. And again, if black exchanges one of his bishops, you know how to evaluate that position. It's not necessarily automatically much better for white, but I think it's already slightly better. <clears throat> so bishop goes to b6, that's a bit strange. Now I can probably just take it, and black's pawn structure will be... Oh, probably there is queen b4 check and taken with the queen. That was also an option. But I still don't believe it was that good for black. So just knight e2, continue with the de development. Uh, once again, my knight can go to c4 a bit later. Uh, h6, so... Do we want to attack on the king side? No, I don't think we have great chances without dark script bishop. So let's just castle short and play uh, positionally. Bishop goes to g4. Okay. Let's just get rid of that pin immediately so that our knight is free to go anywhere he or she wants. <laughs> um, not sure if there is a better position for the knight than other than f3 at the moment. Okay, so queen b4 may be an option for black. Let's prevent that. So preventing the activity prior to uh, doing something active myself. So sort of prophylaxis, this sort of stuff. Now the question is, does black want to exchange the bishop for the knight? So let's see. No. Okay. This is also kind of information. Now we can probably just change the pawn structure and play d4 and if e d4 the knight d4, right? Looks good. In this case, we get the pawn majority on the king side. So our task will be just to simplify a position gradually and then try to convert that majority in the endgame stage. Pretty much the idea behind this exchange to Lopez and this line within the Berlin. So knight takes d4. Uh, what is also interesting, I can just exchange opponent's bishop, which is also good. Uh, possibility, I suppose. For now, though, I think I can try even this. It's just f4, aggressive. Black can try queen c5, queen in my knight, but then I have simple c3, so why not? Now, black is ready to step back with the bishop, I believe. Maybe it's a good moment just to capture it, but I'm not quite ready for it. So it feels like uh, my pieces lack some harmony here. Yeah, I would rather put my knight on. Is it possible though? Bishop d5 is there. Hmm. Maybe not a good time for this move. Uh, let's start with, let's say this rook to e1. Can we do this? Feels a bit strange, but I don't see how this is tactically bad. So it feels like I still have all the resources to protect anything that can be attacked. Like if queen c5, then I have knight f3 or maybe c3 move. Rook d4, queen d4, rook d8. Okay, just queen to c3. And um, yeah, everything looks pretty much solid here. Now, what's next? e5, f5, this sort of stuff, or just something just something else. I don't really know, so let's start with this move. It feels like we need to do something like this because knight on d4 doesn't look very safe. 
Queen goes to c5. Okay, nothing is attacked in my case, in my camp, sorry, and in this case. Uh, so what can we do? Hmm, strange position. We can probably try some like f5 prior to playing e5, but I don't like e5 at all because of this knight d5 jump. And this diagonal a7, g1 is a bit vulnerable as well. So what's the right move? So I'm like king to h1, just going away. Through key a, then e5, knight d5 then. Then queen goes where? Some sort of passive position. Hmm. I'm not really comfortable with my position at all now. So what can we do? We can just play c3, I think, protecting the knight. And if it goes to e8, we can jump to e5. I know it's it's not really a long-term solution, but it's just for now, just covering everything. Which was potentially hanging. But the problem is I have only 57 seconds again. I was too slow here in this game. It's kind of pathetic. C5, okay, jump to B5 or just step back to F3. I think this is a safer option. Still having everything protected. All right, let's just take that. Now it's time for something active. So let's go F5, limiting the bishop. Then let's go E5. Rook D3, just Queen F4. And we're pretty close, so we want to play f6 or something. Just like the next move, so everything is centralized now and ready for attack. It's pretty logical, we have a majority in the king's side, as I said before. All right, I think it's just asking for e6. Let's go this way. All right, so now I can jump to e5 next move. Black has to be very careful. Although I'm not sure that it will help. So what's next? Just knight to g6 or something. That yeah, looks pretty, pretty good. Oh, right. Here we can just take this one. And then probably just attack with queen e4. Ah, rook can go back to d6. That was a bit stupid from my side. All right, so let's just prepare rook to e2. Or maybe rook to f1, that is also an option. Looks pretty nice. When I play rook to f8 with a checkmate. So, what's going on here? If queen kind of covers f8, I will play rook f8 anyway, because I will have extra queen in that case. And we're going to take the pawn on b7, which looks nice. My king has h2 squares, so that's not a problem. Oh, it's not so simple to convert this advantage, obviously, but I think it's still a good, still a good position for us. We have targets. I mean, this looks pretty good to try to convert it. Okay, this drops this pawn, which kind of help. Black should have just uh, stayed still. Yeah, now my pawn promotes or something like this. All right, so that was an interesting game, actually. Um, and at some point I thought black was doing all right. I guess something strange started with this c5 move. I don't think it was necessary. Um, would be more interesting for black, I think, to try something like uh, queen to c7, then maybe knight somewhere, and then f6, trying to get rid of my knight. That was one idea. Um, another one was just to exchange the knight immediately, probably, when everything is more or less okay. And I'm not quite ready for this, uh, you know, uh, quick attack. Why didn't play queen f4 and capture the rook? Because of king e7 uh, protecting the rook, actually. I mean, that was probably a question about uh, this uh, last moments of the game. 
uh, when I played rook f8, rook f8, and king takes f8, right? So if I play queen f4, then king e7, so I cannot capture the rook. Don't know, maybe it was a question about the other moment. Uh, not sure. All right. Uh, but nevertheless, somewhere here, when I played, uh, just a second. Yeah, when I played knight takes d7, yeah, at this moment, I think rook d7 was, was a critical mistake. I guess bishop takes, and then quickly, you know, somewhere to c6 maybe, trying to get counterplay before uh, I started pushing pawns. Something like bishop b5, maybe an option, bishop to c6, and so on. But rook d7 is too passive. I mean, bishop remains uh, just pretty bad there, and c8 doing nothing, literally, when I'm just expanding on, on the king side without problems. And in general, as I said, you should avoid exchanging bishops. So after bishop to e3, if I'm not mistaken, the main move is something like bishop to d6. Yeah, just staying passive, but you still have both bishops, and hence you have better control over position. All right, thanks for the game anyway. Uh, let's have a look if we have someone I've never played before. Uh, Atlanta Gambit, all right. So we have never played, I'll just accept the challenge. So, white pieces again. I mean, nothing's gonna change today, I think. Knight goes to f3, bishop goes to b5. Bishop goes to c5 immediately, so it's a classic uh, variation, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and f5 here. All right, so it's pretty tricky. And if you think that I know the theory here, you're wrong, because I don't. Well, maybe just a few moves, but... Not sure if I know the clear way for advantage here, for white. And bishop to d6 immediately. As far as I remember, it makes sense to start with queen h5 check here. If g6, and we take on g6 uh, with the knight, there is knight f6 move, which wins almost instantly, because queen has to go to h4. Uh, black plays some like rook to g8, and there is just a quick counterattack, as far as I remember. So we just step back to e2. The idea is that we actually force the weakening of black's dark squares. Uh, bishop takes e5, all right, we can take on e4, or we cannot, I don't remember. <laughs> can we take on e4 in this case? I think we do. So just queen e4, then queen e5, something like this, right? Am I stupid, or am I missing something? I just don't remember, so if queen takes e4, and bishop jumps to f5. Ah, uh, hell, I don't remember, I think. Is it really bad for me? I mean, okay, if queen e4, knight f6, queen takes e5, there's king f7, and there is just, uh, again, this initiative with rook e8 and this stuff, but we can just castle in that case. I mean, it looks pretty, pretty safe for me just to take, right? Okay, let's check it. I mean, I don't remember anything here. All right, let's just take on e5 with the queen. Trying to exchange. And here's a critical difference compared to the same, but when you play queen e2 immediately, but not queen to h5, you kind of attack the rook already so this should make a difference i guess so let's just castle now our king is safe at least we have extra pawn yeah we have opposite colored bishops but it's hell an extra pawn right so it's gonna be good for us and we can hope for some advantage so bishop to g5 then 92 something like this or just a modest bishop e3 and the same uh, not sure, but I guess it's fine. So let's go there.
Not that I'm going to take on a7, of course, but I just want to complete my development. And look again, the pawn on g6 prevents black from just taking on e5 because of bishop d4. So a lot of advantages of, uh, you know, playing queen h5 in that position, I guess. Okay, now knight d5 is coming. Should we prevent that? I mean, it looks interesting just to play c4 and stop the knight on e7 because it's quite passive position. So it looks good. I mean, extra pawn, yeah, it's far from, you know, a serious advantage or something, but... I mean, it's clear to me that we're fighting for, for a win. And that's good. Maybe once again, I'm just overestimating my chances here. But for now, it looks smooth. Oh, what if we play g4 now? What if we play g4? Attacking the knight. If that goes to h4, then after bishop g5, it looks like it's trapped. Simple as that, right? Because my knight controls f3. If knight takes c3 and rook takes c3, this bishop on d3 is kind of trapped. Of course, black will protect it with the rook from d8, but it will take time. First of all, my pawn may become much more active. And I don't have to think of how to protect e5 anymore, so everything will be protected in that case. Oh. Let's see. Looks nice for now. Again, we're just doing something to um, limit the activity of opponent's pieces. So, I guess it's the right strategy in general. So black started thinking. That's a good sign. So position is not so simple for black. That's good. Now rook to c1, then rook to c3 comes to mind. That's the first instinct. And a let's try it, because that bishop is kind of stuck, right? <laughs> so, uh, there is a comment on, on, on YouTube that Scotland accent. No, not at all. Come on, guys. I would never dare to reproduce Scottish accent. It's incredibly hard. Oh, what? I'm just gonna take it, come on. It was still possible to play rook d8, protecting the bishop. What happened to black? Come on, it's kind of desperation, but position was still okay. I mean, yeah, strange. All right, let's be careful uh, converting this advantage. Now, bishop is pretty good. Controlling a bunch of critical squares, including d8. We can put it on f6 if we want. Do we want or do we just want to play f4? I mean, f4 looks also good. Just protecting the bishop there on g5. I like it on g5. And now just what? Just knight e4, let's say. Yeah, lots of weak squares in black's camp. Of course, we still, you know... Just winning because of the extra minor piece in the first place. Uh, but I'm just trying to say that even if material is even, we have lots of targets to attack here. So let's just do that. Blockading the pawn on h4. Maybe intending to bring the king to g4 at some point. Uh, what is the next step? Let's bring the knight to f6. Controlling the promotion square. Now I think it's good just to bring the rook to d7 to control the e7. And very soon, we should have a chance to just break through. Okay, for now, let's use the vulnerable position of the knight in d4. And okay, we have 46 seconds to finish the game. So what I also want to do is just to play b5 here rook is protected so we just bring the king back and now what now something like knight d5 looks pretty good just attacking e7 oh sorry c7 <coughs> knight f3 creates no threats so let's just go e6 
then e7, and then promotes. That's the plan. So there was a suggestion in chat to play something like um, rook takes d4, but we don't need it. I mean, why would we sacrifice anything when we can uh, just win the game without sacrifices? Just grabbing everything what's handy. That is also a good way to do, isn't it? So it's lost for black now, I mean, like completely. Knight to f5, what was that? Okay, let's just take there. Let's play this. Let's take that. Let's go there. Let's go there with the checkmate idea. And here is a checkmate. Yes. So that's why I played before b5 to checkmate the king. Of course, I didn't think about that at that moment. Uh, I just wanted to grab some space, but nevertheless. Um, okay, so what went wrong and when? Uh, hard to say. I mean, I think that my position was already quite good after g4. So when I played g4, I really loved my position because it controlled a lot. Um, I think in this particular line, when white plays queen h5 and then queen e2, taking on e5 is not that cool. So as far as I remember, the way to go here is to play bishop f5. And if white plays aggressive g4, after bishop e6, uh, I cannot take on e4 at least right now because of bishop d5. So yeah, I have to wait with that. And this g4 is kind of, you know, the move that limits your pieces, but at the same time, it's a weakening of the king side and you can use it as well. So most likely this e4 will drop, but you will have some counter chances because of my advanced uh, g4 pawn. All right, so that's the way to go, I guess. Uh, not a big expert in this line. So thanks for the game. And now let's get back to normal order of challenges. So I will accept the challenge from the Clasher. Wow, my God, we have not played for ages. And black pieces, of course. So it's a sign <laughs> of something. I don't know what exactly. Okay, d4, knight of six. As far as I remember, the Clasher is a fan of London system or something like this. So, um, let me remember. Let's just play d5 and c5 and knight c6. Knight goes to d2. So when the knight is on g1, this plan with queen b6 and c4 is not necessarily that uh, great because white has this f3, e4 plan quickly undermining my pawn chain. Mm, so what to do instead? Bishop f5 is kind of option. So let's just bring the bishop to f5. Also, it's always possible just to play e6, bishop d6. One of the possibilities, no questions. But in this particular game, I just want to develop my bishop to the active position. All right, now b7 is hanging. Maybe that's why no one plays that, right? So if we play queen d7, it's kind of very vulnerable position. But then we have a sort of c4, so maybe we'll have time to basically get what we want. So c4, then e6, and then bishop to d6 is if we are, you know, lucky enough to have that option. Why didn't I play queen b6? Just because of d takes c5. I, find it a bit annoying. It would take on c5 with the queen, then queen takes b7, our rook cannot go to b8. So feels like we're just losing the pawn for nothing in that case. Moreover, bishop b5 is coming there, so don't like it. So white is thinking, it's a good sign. So most likely position is not that simple. <coughs> Yeah, it's always a question to take on c5 or not to take on c5. In this particular case, I think it makes no sense because I play e5 with the tempo and then immediately capture on c5. So why doesn't win uh, the pawn there? And I'm just getting good center. And bishop b5 doesn't look very convincing to me either. 
So what if I just uh, play a6 immediately? I mean, it's a bishop, right? I'll be happy to exchange it for the knights, you know me. So there is a question about the previous game. Queen e4, bishop d5, queen goes away, and uh, it's impossible to take an h1 because if knight takes c6. Um, most likely, yes. You cannot take on h1 immediately, but you can play queen e7, let's say, and I still have, you know, this uh, pretty vulnerable diagonal. So maybe it's exactly what, uh, what plays there. I don't remember. I mean, I just... Uh, I have just seen this several times, and I do remember that somebody played something like that against me. So, bishop f5, provoking g4, weakening this diagonal, then bishop goes to e6, being ready to occupy that diagonal at any moment I take on e4. And then even if I win the pawn, I still have this vulnerability. I mean, because g4 is a commitment. <laughs> okay, now in this position, we have kind of a uh, pair of bishops already, which is very good. I love bishops, you know me, as I said, and we have no problems with, yeah, just finding good squares for our pieces all around the board, I suppose. So now, after knight to f3, I think we have to play e6, well, probably we don't have to, but it's logical, protecting c5, and if the knight jumps to e5, uh, in addition to just rook to c8, we have an interesting option of playing rook to b6, which may be too experimental. Because if white simply protects b2 with b3 move or something, a rook on b6 is kind of cut off. All right, so could be not very wise to play that. Let's just complete the development and we'll see. Okay, so now we have to choose between rook c8 and rook b6. And I have a feeling that rook c8 should be played. Because rook b6, okay, just b3, so what? I mean, pawn is protected and then c6 is controlled, our rook on b6 is kind of cut off, as I said before. What is the trick to remember in previous games after 10 seconds? It's erased from my brain. Well, they should be not erased. That's the trick. <laughs> then you will remember it. Uh, okay, rook after e1. Well, actually, remembering the stuff is something that comes with the you know, experience. If you just play chess regularly, well, at some point you will see that. You remember your games for a long time. Well, this image of the game is always somewhere there. I will probably not recall, you know, games from my childhood, like Move to Move, but I can still remember some of them. Uh, you know, at least the general course of the game or something like this, or maybe the opening or something. So it's possible, definitely, and you don't have to be a genius to to do that. So there was a suggestion in chat to play g5. Well, I don't think g5 makes sense here, so it's more logical, I guess, for black to play on the queen side. We have more chances there. Moreover, look at my light script bishop controlling b1 square. So definitely, if we, for example, open the b file, we'll have some, some edge. I think we can do that with the help of this. A5 move and then probably b4 sort of minority attack trying to open the position for our bishops, open the position for our rooks, and so on. All right, knight d4 doesn't really stop me from playing b4, so let's go b4. <laughs> My brain is full of worthless fantasy football stats. No room is left. Okay. But with fantasy football, you can probably earn more than with chess. So that's okay. I mean... <laughs> oh, there is no trick. I started writing this message when the game ended. Oh, that was probably not even a question uh, to me, right? <laughs> oh, shit. I confused everything. All right. Uh, so now we can take on c3, let's say. Uh, the problem, though, with this knight on c6, now we have to think how to get rid of that guy. 
most likely we should move our knight to e4. It will be logical to do that after taking on c3 because we have a target. Now knight goes to e4 with two ideas, just to take the pawn and to play f6, attacking that knight and then grabbing the knight on c6. It feels like we win a material here. We win a pawn, right? Oh, I weaken d7, but it doesn't matter because we have rook to c6. Um, so let's just go for it or what to do, actually. Taking on c4 is a possibility as well here. Uh, well, f6, knight to d7, rook takes c6, knight takes a fight. It's not entirely clear to me. So what's the best move here? What's the best move? Let's just take on c4. No, let's take on c6. So it's basically the same, but we have a pawn on c4, and in that line, if we play f6 and force all this, we kind of lose a pawn on d5. That's the thing, that's the difference. Okay, not just c3, c2, right? Or, you know, preparing everything carefully. So we have to be careful still. I, I mean, it's not entirely clear yet. But I think it's, it makes sense to make opponent's rook passive. Now let's just play c2. To make it passive entirely, let's play g5 now. Maybe it was not needed. Just wanted to make sure I have enough room for, for my pieces here. Okay, now I can go to c5 protected by the bishop. Okay, let's take that one. Let's play f5. Okay. Bring the king to center. It's just winning now. Check. Then takes on c6, then brings the king to there, then takes the pawn on d4, yeah, and then plays e5, e4, and the stuff. Okay, where is our checkmate quickly? Come on, come on, come on. Maybe not the best checkmate there. I mean, not the optimal decision, but all right, still a checkmate. Uh, all right, so what was the mistake? Maybe this knight c6 was already a mistake. Because in that case, yeah, I had this idea of f6. That was probably the bad idea in general. Well, at first it looks pretty good just to limit my activity, but then I noticed this f6 thing and everything became clear. Uh, maybe it was also interesting for you to try something like this before. I know it's a self-weakening of the position, but let's say I take, you capture this way maybe, um, and then you start attacking b5, because yes, you weaken something in your camp, like the pawn on a3 now, but my pawn is also like weakness here on b5, and it's fixed now, it's blockaded. So let's say if I just go back to e7, you just play knight d4, and you have nearly perfect setup here. Very active with uh, so many different ideas, taking on b5, going to c6, and so on. Um... So I don't know, maybe bishop b6 was better in that case, and that is what I actually wanted to play here, just to take that knight if it goes to d4. So I kind of take it. But now we have a posit covered bishop, so position is uh, not so clear, right? I no longer have pair of bishops, that's the first achievement for white. And after ed4, let's say, yeah, black should be still a bit better, I guess, a bit. Because now it will be hard for you to get to my b5 pawn. But once you get there, well, you will have some chances. I mean, that was probably an option for you. Not sure. Uh, in the first place, I would never take on c5, I guess. Maybe that's, that's the wrong idea. Not to take on c5, because without it, it's quite hard to find uh, what to do. Uh, just because I control more. But for that, you have to avoid uh, moving the bishop to b5 and then taking on c6. I think that was uh, not so good idea in the first place. All right, just immediate knight f3 without playing bishop b5 was good in the opening. Okay, thanks for the game. Uh, let's go on. So the next is Olaf, except. <clears throat> the question, can you play a queen's 
Indian defense game if you get black next? Well, it's not uh, dependent entirely on me. I mean, my opponent has to play uh, d4, and not only that, he has to play c4 and then knight to f3, or knight f3 and then c4. So, there are too many factors, actually, to be met so that Queen's Indian happens. Well, here we go. <laughs> A3, all right, so let me remember how I react to that. Normally, I play something like bishop a6. Queen goes to c2. Now we just step back and play c5. <clears throat> That's how we do. So what's the idea of playing bishop a6? Well, queen no longer controls the d5 square, um, hence why can play d5 only sacrificing a pawn, but just uh, it's it's a different thing compared to queen on d1. In that case, d5 is just amazing. I mean, you don't sacrifice anything and you just grab space and all this stuff. Okay, so let's play bishop e7 to start with. Let's castle. Let's just play d5. Uh, not the best way to play this position, I know, but one of the possibilities, for sure. Okay, now we usually have a choice, like taking with the piece, taking with the knight, or taking with the pawn. Let's just take with the pawn. We're not against playing the position with hanging pawns, because it can be instructive. I mean, both ways. I can either win or lose it, easily. Knight e5 looks a bit premature to me, so let's just approach this knight immediately. We attack d4, so white has not a white choice, I guess. Question Who are your favorites in winning FIDE World Cup 2019? No idea. I don't even follow that event. Don't even know what's going on there right now. So, logically, have no favorites. So, d4 is handing. There are just two choices. Yeah, just to take on c6 or maybe rook to d1. I would prefer rook to d1, just keeping that active knight on the board. Because now, oh, one more exchange. That is pretty bad, I think. Because now, look at this position. White actually exchanged good pieces for my bad pieces. And ended up with pretty passive ones. So I think we can just play this line now. C4, very simple. Just grabbing space. And queen to d7, attacking the knight. Now we can do lots of different things. I guess white wants to play e4 at some point, so we should do everything to prevent that, right? Maybe I should too quick evaluate in this position because it's, well, resembles some classic lines. Mm, for example, games between Botvinnik and Capablanca, so the idea is just to play f3, e4. Maybe I cannot stop it. It's not an immediate threat though, if f3 and e4, then d4 is handed, so I have some time still. Maybe I can just be aggressive here with b5, a5, and b4. Quickly starting my play on the queen side. Rook to d1, protecting d4, alright. And e4 immediately here. Okay. That's probably not what white wants to achieve here. So normally f3, e4 is the plan. Let's just uh, take it this way. And then put the knight on d5. Looks pretty good. There's another idea though, just to play rook to e8 or something. But I like my knight on d5, so let's do it. Blockading pawn d4, 
and having good chances, right? That bishop is still pretty bad. The one on c1, I guess. Bishop e3 shouldn't really help white. I mean, knight c5 is a possibility, but I'm not going to take it. I'll just go away with my queen. But yeah, indeed, it's the way to activate the knight at least a bit. Queen there. Okay. Let us just tap back. So that our rook takes part in the game. Now exerting some pressure on knight on e4. So the idea is just to uh, put the pieces on the right positions. And then just start playing b4, c3, creating a passer. That is at least the difference between uh, my pawns and opponent's pawns. Opponent's pawns are, yeah, just inefficient. My pawns are still pretty good. So it's a dynamic pawn structure with the possibility to create a passer, which will be well supported. Well, white already has a passed pawn, but it's kind of isolated and potentially not so efficient. That's the thing. All right, let's just play f6. I don't think it's wrong. Now what? Just before, or it's too too early for that. I don't know. Maybe it's just okay. I mean, why not? Let's do it. But I didn't calculate everything properly. I just didn't have time for it. Maybe it's wrong. But I expected just a total exchange on, on d5. I think that was a good way for white to go. So now let's play queen c6, supporting the pawn from behind. I don't mind uh, actually placing my rook on c8 as well. And just dedicating everything to c3 at some point. Rook a7, alright, so this can be dangerous. Can be not that dangerous. Is there a dark threat to g7 or something? I don't see it. Maybe I'm blind. Knight f6 can happen at some point. Yeah, I have to be very careful about that. Um, let's just uh, protect our queen so that if knight f6, then we take with the knight, not with the pawn. Yeah, it's kind of defense. Okay, now queen g4. Yeah, it's getting really tricky. And we have to be very careful. Queen e6, is it a defense? G7 is not hanging if knight f6 and knight f6. All right, looks like a defense. Just trying to exchange queens here to neutralize opponent's attack. Yeah, we succeeded in it. Now we should have pleasant ending, but it's not so clear and we don't have enough time. So we have to play faster. Let's just do it. Okay, 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 okay. Um, just f5. Not sure if we, we need it, but I don't see a better option to bring my other rook to, to action. So let's kind of do it. Whatever whatever it takes, whatever happens then. Rook e2, pretty active. Now we can do something like knight f4. Oh, oh, this is a big blunder. I just take I just take the knight. Now it's completely lost for... Oh, Rook was hanging there as well. So let's take that one as well. Yeah. Didn't... Oh, come on. What's going on? Man. Why do you do this to me? All right. Um, okay. <laughs> so it was pretty strange uh, finish of otherwise not so uh, clear game. Uh, so somewhere here... I think white had a better chance to react. Uh, so here after a before, I guess immediate capture on d5 could have been interesting. And the point is, uh, after this exchange, everything looks fine for black, but my pawn on c4 is quite vulnerable. So you can probably just attack it immediately. I don't see any better defense than rook to c8. My, rook did, my other rook doesn't have an access to that pawn, not yet at least. This is not clear to me. I mean, this should be better for black because it's just better pawn structure, more promising pawn structure at least, but um, white can have pretty good chances to survive it, in my opinion. Some like rook c2 maybe, intending rook to c1 at some point. Maybe just f3, intending bishop to e1 or bishop f2. 
and then just trying to activate that rook. So it's pretty pathetic that the rook has to protect d4. Maybe it's better for uh, the bishop to do that so that the rook can be active. So I don't know. I mean, I, I don't see anything clear here. Uh, okay. Nevertheless, it was interesting. So area 51. Area 51. And black pieces, God. Thanks for that Queen's Indian game. Quite instructive. Well, you're welcome. But there was really luck, you understand, right? That my opponent played exactly... First of all, I played with black. Second of all, my opponent allowed me to play Queen's Indian. Whew. But that's fine. All right. We played something similar last time. Maybe just the same thing which we played last time. So, if I remember correctly, it's it's a good line for black. I'm pretty safe, at least. Same stuff, like last time, right? Um, what did I do last time? I played queen c7, as far, as far as I remember. Yes, I did that. So Black's idea here is just to prepare the minority attack on the queen side gradually. Maybe in this game, what we'll play to like d5. It's also an option, by the way. But then I don't see anything wrong with just playing e5, I guess. But I still want to have my bishop protected just in case white decides to jump with the knight somewhere to d4. I don't want it, simply. All right, let's go to c8 now. H5, okay. Um, this is probably a bad idea. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what I mean. So D5 just missed that resource. By the way, very good try, very good, very good move. So now my pawn structure is math. Oh, I hate myself when I miss these resources. Not that I didn't see it, I just noticed it immediately after I played Queen C6, just exactly that moment. That's really pathetic. <laughs> All right, but we have an extra pawn after all. Yeah, it's a bad pawn, I know. But, okay, let's just try to, to play this position. We have no other one. Just have to play this one. Let's go, rookie five, attacking the knight. And protecting the pawn on d5 in advance. If white takes, I'll be happy to see that. When it doesn't, we have some other targets now. So, will it help? That's a good question. Not so sure. So, this knight is nearly perfect. How to deal with this piece? It's quite hard. It's quite hard. Um, G6 now. Yeah, I think we should do something like this. Otherwise, we're just worse. Because if white gradually improves his position, I have just a little chance for a breakthrough. So. I guess to d4. Okay. So, what to do now? Uh, rook takes c1, just king takes c1, so we don't win that pawn. Um, now we have a chance to get the rook passer. That's good news. What else? Um, 
not much. So let's just bring the king to f7. What was the problem with rook f4? Nothing, just king g2 and what's next? I didn't see... Oh, the idea was just to take on e1 and then to take on a4. Yeah, that was an idea. But in that case, I guess there was rook e8 counterplay. Okay, we'll discuss it after the game. So when the knight was still on f5, and if I kind of play rook e1, rook e1, rook a4, at some point there was rook e8 and so on. Pretty annoying. But yeah, now let's just focus on the game. Uh, so I think I have to prevent that activity with the b5. If it helps, I'm not sure. But if I take, I will definitely activate my opponent's rook. That's stupid. So b5. And I have just noticed knight takes b5, a resource that I didn't even consider. So stupid. Not to do that. So knight b5, a b5, a6. I'm in time, right? Rook c8 and rook a8. Whew. Thanks, God. It would be really bad to, to, to blunder something like that, really. But that's a okay. kai. King f2. Okay, what to do now? How to activate our pieces? Well, first of all, I want to somehow exert pressure on that knight. So can I do that? Just bishop g7, want to take on e1, then take on d4. That's kind of threat, an immediate one, right? Yeah, knight goes away. That's good. So now we should have some activity, right? So like h5 looks pretty natural. Let's try that one. Ah. The idea was to create a passer, right? But now after gh5, I'm afraid I have to take with the rook. Because there is knight to b4. Think, again, I didn't consider. Just for some stupid reasons. And now I have to get some counterplay quickly before my opponent actually managed to beat me. So let's bring our rooks over. There are threats like bishop e5 and stuff. Some checkmates maybe. Uh, bishop h6, bishop f4 is even is even better option. I don't really know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Because if I play bishop e5, there is a just f4. Maybe g5, right? So g5 preparing it. Yeah, g5 prepares bishop e5. Kind of king is in danger. White's king. So material is even now, but white has to think about the king. Mm, hard to focus when your key is actually laughing like that, right? <laughs> uh, but anyway, we'll try our best. Uh, rook to h3. Does it win a piece? No, it doesn't. Unfortunately, maybe just bringing the king closer will do the trick. Like this. Does it work? Yeah, it should work. Okay. Now I should be winning, right? Last time I was winning as well, but I spoiled everything at some point. All right, how to escape the uh, perpetual or something like this, probably. Or it goes to f7. Now, what's the threat? I don't see one. What's the threat? Rook to h7, something like this. All right. Mm. Mm. Oh, well, come on. Um, let's just go here. Attacking the rook now. Rook goes away. Now let's just regroup. Yeah. I'm more or less satisfied with my position now. So we we'll check to give this one probably for starters. Now let's just attack this knight. Check. Takes 
the pawn and the rest should be not that complicated okay pinning the guy taking there and so on okay yeah why draw it's not a draw come on so there was a comment in chat draw no not a draw there is no perpetual so i just escaped one and so on so it was pretty interesting so it's somewhere around this moment when white actually played d5 i missed that resource i thought crap my position is so bad now but then somehow i managed to uh yeah basically get over it and white never regained the pawn well at the moment when it was no longer that good um but um yeah somewhere around this moment i already felt more or less confidence so that nothing bad is really happening and there is a comment in chat that why now rook f4 so the idea was probably uh to win a pawn well first of all after just a simple knight d4 my rook is kind of stuck here so it's out of play it's no longer attacking anything that's the first thing uh, second thing, I guess why can just protect it with the king. So as I told you during the game, answering your comment, this doesn't really win the material. I mean, this is probably something that loses one. Well, at least it looks scary. Maybe it's still fine if I play f6, so at least I don't lose the piece. So like after, uh, well, I, yeah, I don't. Because if knight e7, then king f7 attacking both the rook and the knight, so it doesn't work like immediately, but still looks a bit a bit strange to me. Let's say just rook b8, attacking the pawn, and now creating instead of winning my bishop. So if I do something like, you know, just simple b5 move, there is knight to e7, and then knight goes to g6, and my bishop is uh, trapped, because after bishop e7, only move, there is this move. So I'm just losing the game here. I mean, it's dangerous to take such a pawn where you're not ready. That's why I basically decided just to play g6, to get rid of that knight first, improve my king a bit, and then think of uh, anything else more active. All right, that was the logic behind it. But I actually didn't see the idea, to be completely honest, that after rook f4, like two pieces in white's camp are overloaded. I mean, if you take on e1 immediately, then king takes e1, you don't win a pawn. But after rook to f4, well, white has to protect two weaknesses, and I'm attacking those with, with only one rook, right? But again, even if this doesn't look very convincing, just a king f2 move or something, uh, there is just knight d4 move now, and I don't achieve anything. All right. Okay, thanks for the game. Uh, next one is chess cut it. So here we go, e4, c5, knight goes to f3, d4. Oh, Sicilian, yeah, I've just realized. Let's go, e5, bishop d2, takes on, no, doesn't. How's that possible? So knight takes c3 is automatic and then bishop back to e7. This should be very bad pawn structure for black. Let's just take on d5, I think. So what's going on? Uh, the video stopped. How's that possible? Yeah, but um, I think guys from Chess Twenty Four can answer. So the video is uh, the video has stopped, or everything is still fine. Let me know. So. Video is fine. All right, so maybe just uh, your problems are. Okay, oh, yeah. let's just castle. I mean, maybe it's not that terrible for black as I expected, but it still looks it still looks pretty good for white, honestly. So what's the point here? We want to prevent d6, right? That's our main idea. This should be our main motivation here. So let's just bring the knight there then.
knight b5, attacking d5 at the same time, intending to bring the knight to d6. Simple as that. I don't care about e5 pawn. So let's just take d5. The thing is to prevent d6, that's the idea. Why it's important? Because, well, in that case, the bishop will be buried alive. And that's nice, isn't it? Like this. Look, look, look at this. I love this position. Come on. Such a monster in d6. What? h6 was played. Now. You can't play this passive when you have such a problem, I think. Well, 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 I don't care about that either. So let's just play g3, f4. <coughs> Increasing the pressure. Maybe h4 was better, just preventing even queen g5. But as I said, I guess even in the end game, it will be pretty, pretty simple play for, for white. Knight goes to e7. Right. Now black can do whatever, whatever he wants, he or she. Um, bishop will never, ever be activated. At least I will do everything to prevent that. Now let's just complete the development, bring the rook to e-file. I think it looks logical, right? So a6 with the idea of b5, should we react? I mean, it doesn't change anything, so we shouldn't. Bishop d5, let's say. Knight f7 is already a threat. Followed by rook e8 and then taking on f7, I think. It's hard for black to play this position, I believe. So let's just take on f7, right? Because why not? Our first tangible achievement here. Rook f7, rook e8. Rook is pinned, king has to go away. Bishop takes f7, goodbye. Good game. King goes away immediately, all right, we just have extra pawn and still pretty nice position. Okay, how to convert it? What's the best way? What's the best move here? Uh, let's just go here. Just going back, okay, we have captured the pawn. The job is done. Now let's go back. Let's go home. We can play bishop b4 check now and then a3. We can play a3 immediately, exchanging this bishop for that knight. Not sure that that knight deserves it. So yeah, let's just play bishop e4. Keeping the bishop on the board and then playing a3 or something. Just getting rid of that knight. King g8, okay. Go away. Now, what to do now? What's the best way to convert this one? Not quite sure, but we can start with something simple like bishop d5 check. Lands of like c3 controlling before additionally preventing black from playing b4. Let's say just enjoying the position for now. At some point, we can just start pushing our pawns. This should be logical thing like... Um, Let's say f5, g4, h4, g5, right? Because why not? We have a majority there and should be the most logical continuation. Okay, knight on b7 is not quite bad. Um, I'm still not convinced that I have to do anything specific here to win the game. But it's kind of very tempting to keep that knight on the board as well. Um, so what if we just play this check again? Now that f5, 97 looks a bit artificial. I'll just put the bishop on g6. Controlling literally the whole board. Okay, knight d6, rook d6 looks pretty much forced. And then we will have no problems with getting to the seventh rank as well. Uh, pay attention, we have same colored bishop ending now and all our pawns are on right uh, squares. 
squares of dark, which is nice. Okay, rookie seven now. Hmm. Complete domination. Okay, let's just bring the king closer. So what my opponent wants to do, uh, unclear. Let's just go f5, f6. Aha, that was a plan. So f5 was, by the way, pretty useful stuff. Because I don't want to exchange that rook. I'll just step back for now. So our plan is still alive, h4, g5 at some point. Let's go and do that. Um, all right. Attacking d5. I should have finished this game much earlier, but somehow failed to punish my opponent. For bringing my knight to d6. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the game, I guess. Uh, that was, yeah, pretty generous now. Uh, but indeed, uh, once I got my knight on d6, that was all over. Yeah, my bad technique actually prevented me from winning the game quickly. Uh, but I think you actually felt it during the game. It was really hard to even breathe. Right, so you didn't have enough space, and uh, that bishop was just terrible. Um, anyways, thanks for the game. Um, let's have a look. What do we have here? Okay, so we're in. Accept. Last week, uh, our game was pretty dramatic uh, because I should have lost it, but you know, somehow managed to win it. Let's see what happens today. Okay, Sicilian, quite predictable. Let's do something I've... I haven't played recently, at least. E5 after G6, not sure. If it is good, let's see. Okay, white's pieces are placed logically. Now my knight controls h5, so whenever I play g5, knight is forced somewhere. But not to h5 to get to f4, that's important. And there is no clear way for black to stop me from a direct attack if I want, such as g5, h4, h5, something like this. But for that, I will need my bishop developed, right? So the comment there is some waste screen lag. <clears throat> That's for sure, because um, uh, when you lose some pockets, it's called dropped frames. Well, it, it, it never recovers. Then we have this lag. It's, it's happening almost uh, every episode. I mean, we just have a terrible internet connection. So when it is only once, like slightly interrupted, then we have this drop frames and yeah, it's happening. Sorry for that, guys. Sorry for that. So d5, is it really a threat now? I'm not sure. So let's just prevent black from doing it. Let's just play g5. And I guess to e8, very passive position. That is very good for us, I guess. Uh, but our h4, h5 d doesn't make sense to me, at least right now. So let's just prepare castling and see how that works. Uh, because this looks much better than just playing h4, h5, having the king on the e1. 
Right. In this case, I wanted to play just f4 up to knight e4, but now I see that uh, black has e takes f4, and then my knight is under attack. So it's not necessarily that clear as I expected. And that's bad. Well, let's play h4 at least. And then bishop goes to g4. Uh, this may be very annoying. Okay, so let's just do some prophylaxis here. Go away for now to have more space for my ro rook. All right, so to have c1 just in case it is attacked. And also have an a2 protected, which is also quite good. Okay, knight d5. It's kind of tempting now, but I want to start with h4 to have g5 protected just in case. And then knight to d5 at some point. Let's say after b4, why not? Another idea can be just to play bishop h3 first, exchange that bishop, then play knight d5 to have that dominant knight. And after all, of course, I want to just attack on the king side. Play h5, takes g6, and then using the h file if I have a chance. So let's see. For now, I'm just satisfied with this move. And with this position in general. Okay, now we have a pair of bishops, which is very good. Our position on the queen side looks pretty um, pretty safe for now. Let's continue with the active play on the king side. I mean, I'm not even against of playing something like bishop takes d4 and then bishop to d3. We'll have a typical pattern, so uh, opposite colored bishops in the uh, middle game. I think it should be just great for us. Because that bishop on g7 will be pretty passive in that case. And hence our attack will be very dangerous. Let's see. Maybe we will do that. I don't see a counterplay for black, to be honest. Doesn't feel like this a4 is really dangerous. So let's have a look. Just take here. Let's just take there, as I said before. And play on light squares. I mean, just compare my light square bishop and opponent's dark square bishop. They cannot be compared, I guess. So I think rook h7 should finish the game. Am I right? Or it's just in my dreams? Oh, probably I'm overestimating that attack. Uh, rook h7, king h7, queen h5, king back to g8, bishop g6, and then the rook simply goes away somewhere. But then queen h7 and knight h5, well, maybe maybe just a, just a good way to finish the game. Knight h5 also looks very good. Um, I don't know which, which move to play. Let's just play this one. Not sacrificing anything, I guess. There's also a way to go in this position. Well, we should just bring our queen to attack. Let's do it. Maybe that was too slow. Yes, it was indeed. But taking on d5 was too risky, I guess. Now there should be win. But how? That's the question. Like, what if we take there? I mean, it was all unnecessary, I believe, but it looks nice still. Maybe I missed something like rook h7. Yeah, I definitely missed something like rook h7 followed by rook h1. But I've just seen that. Okay, I would have extra rook in this position. So I thought, all right, let it be. I mean, yeah, once I've captured on g7, I noticed there was just this nice finish. Takes, takes, and then queen to h4, checkmate. And so pretty typical tactics, right? 
but all right. So uh, basically after I played g5 and that knight was forced to e8, I thought um, I already had kind of very good position. Um, I don't really know, but uh, I find the idea of mixing this g6 with e5 pretty strange because look, you play e5 and then instantly bring the bishop to g7, which is in my opinion is just against the spirit of Hanketuin bishop, right? So you want that bishop active on that long diagonal and you just close it and then occupy that diagonal. Uh, that's the thing, all right? So either play e5 and then, you know, just wait for what white is going to do because sometimes indeed that bishop goes to uh, g7 or maybe even the h6 all right uh, and um, another thing is that uh, if you want to put the bishop on g7 then keep your pawn on e7 that's that's my opinion all right that's the thing because if you mix the things as you can see you get pretty strange position so that bishop remains passive till the end of the game and so on and so forth all right so, gonna play against Cobra now, and it's gonna be the last game for, for today. I'm playing with black pieces. Cobra, are you still there? Bishop e7 even after g6? Well, yes, then, but then g6 is just a waste of time. Simple as that. So there is a suggestion on chat. Okay, so it feels like we're gonna have like Catalan stuff here. Let's see. Knight goes to d2. Preparing c4 or something. Okay, let me remember how to react to that. Um, there's an option of playing knight to e4, by the way. c5 is not that great because white is faster than. <clears throat> After c4, the center has been opened and... And, uh, yeah, that bishop on g2 becomes really good. Another option is just to, you know, play the same, like... Like usual, like usually against uh, Catalan, like c6, b6, bishop a6, knight d7, that stuff. Uh, it's also a possibility. It's always an option. Just trying to guess if I if I have anything there. Well, maybe not. Let's just play b6. Let's see. Maybe white doesn't even play c4. Can be can be the thing as well. Oh, just c3. Yeah. Pretty modest way of playing it. All right, then bishop b7 controlling e4. Let's why not to a6. And now let's just undermine the center. Now it feels like the right moment because we're almost completely developed. Just uh, need to bring the knight somewhere to c6, I think. Um, yeah, why not? And yeah, we have pretty simple position. Simple for black to play, I mean, just have more space, control the center well, have different ideas, maybe just b5 before again, something like this. Usually when you have this pawn structure, you try to play that stuff, like b5 and, and so on. Uh, b5 is not ready now, so maybe a5 intending uh, bishop to a a6 or something like that have to check the e4, but I don't think it will be very dangerous for us. So let's just play a5. It doesn't feel like white is ready for e4 for the same reason uh, I didn't play c5. White is just not very 
well developed at the moment. I mean, why didn't I play c5 earlier? Because it didn't feel like the right moment. So you have to be active only when you are ready for it. That's simple logic. <clears throat> b5. We are ready for it. We are developed. Our opponent is not which means we should have an upper hand in this active play. Okay, now I think we have this move. Just trying to create some weaknesses. Maybe it was a premature action again, because now it has some like C4. And it's not necessarily that clear. But I think in that case, we can take on D4 and then take on C4, creating a bunch of weaknesses in White's camp. So let's see if that works. All right. So in this case, I wanted just to take on c3 and then take on d4. And then, well, we always have that b3 to attack. A sort of achievement. Maybe not that great after all, but we're playing with black. Come on. So let's take there. Probably bishop takes, right? Because ed4, well, bishop will remain very bad on c3. <clears throat> pretty passive and that pawn on d4 will be potentially my target so one more weakness i think not a good idea for white but however white captures i think black is completely fine here even if not more right especially before let's say look at this position our bishops are pretty good we have no weaknesses at the moment that a5 Cannot be considered weakness. White has no real chance to get there. So potentially we have better center. If there is an exchange on e4 after white plays e4, okay, we will just have a majority on the king side. While white's majority on the queen side is not so efficient because b3 is a backward pawn. So what to do now? Bishop d3 comes to mind, but is it really good? I mean, we control more after that move. We can also consider something like knight to e4 after that. So yeah, why not? Let's bring the bishop to d3. Looks like a good square. Looks like a good piece on d3. Oh, I missed that move. My bad. My bad. Okay. Queen b6 then. We're anyway slightly better. At least slightly better. I want to believe. Rook c6 is coming. So I, now I have to be really careful because I've already blundered. I have already blundered something in this game. This bishop c5, for example, I could have prevented that, I believe. This would have been much better than this. Okay, let's bring the queen to b4. And just protect it with the rook. This one or another one. I don't know. If queen d3, then queen takes c5. But it doesn't help if white plays rook to c1. That's another blunder. Uh, but nevertheless, I think queen has to be protected. But then there is a problem with the back rank. Oh my god, what am I doing to my position? Playing so stupid chess. I mean. Now, okay, now it's no longer clear. Who's doing what? Who's fighting for which result? All right, because I think white is okay here. Really. I don't see huge problems. Rook to c7, okay, so what to do now? Um, our target is b3, right? But it's hard to get there. It's really hard to get there. So the comment, this guy is not funny at all. I'm not, indeed. 
I'm here not to entertain you. <laughs> I'm here to teach. And just to my defense, it's already the end of the show, so I'm pretty tired. <laughs> so at the beginning, it's usually a bit more intense. Okay. Hell, I don't know what to do in this position, and I have no time on the clock. So Cobra is probably going to beat me for the first time. Why? <laughs> that was strange, probably just a blunder. Right, it gives me some chances now, but I have 26 seconds on the clock. It's it's pretty, pretty bad situation. Indeed. Okay, e5, e4 was winning. Gosh. Really playing badly in this game. Okay, let's fix, fix the stuff. Yeah, now we're just winning a lot. Okay, so... That was just a miracle. I mean, uh, with such a knight on b5, it's already pretty bad position for black. So after bishop e4, maybe I even missed something like, you know, attacking my knight, but it doesn't seem like what has a chance to attack my knight. So bishop e4, all right. Well, we can debate if it was uh, the best option, but indeed here, just, just move your rook somewhere and you should be, well, better. Right, because you control much more. Your rooks are so good here. Your knight is ready to jump to d6 to attack my f7. Well, at the very least, you're not worse here, but I do believe white is just better in this position. Maybe I'm overestimating white's chances here. So, for example, if I play some something quick like knight d2 and then back and so on, maybe I'm still fine just because of that tactical trick. So it's not so simple for white, for example, to forget about b3 pawn and go all in on, on, on the king's side and so on, but... I don't know. Yeah, I made lots of mistakes earlier in the game, I think. So at some point, my position was really good. So somewhere here, after, say, uh, yeah, somewhere here, it was just nearly perfect, right? Uh, but I missed this bishop c5, and that was the key. Because uh, um, as long as I have that great bishop on b4, pin in the knight, I just have to be much better. So probably something simple like rook c8 was the best move here. In that case, though, rook c8, queen c8, bishop f6 may damage my pawn structure. Maybe not, not optimal solution. So like queen d6 maybe, but then again, bishop takes f6. So after all, maybe maybe knight d7, controlling that square and intending to do something like e5. Probably something like that, I'm not sure. But there should be something much better than what I've done in the game. So I played bishop d3 and after bishop c5, white was already... Well, pretty, pretty okay. Now I don't control dark squares and white pretty easily finds dark squares to activate the pieces one by one, like queen c1, queen c3, just like in the game. And white is doing well here. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for uh, being with me. Sorry again for some um, technical problems uh, that happened. Uh, it probably happens like every time. So just a uh, uh, slight interruption and then we have this uh, problem with the synchronization of the voice and the video. I hope it was not that terrible so you could uh, still understand me and learn something. If you did, I'm happy. That's my primary goal. You know it. Uh, so uh, wish you a great weekend just as usual and see you around hopefully very soon. Bye-bye.